Yeah, it was just sort of fun. I guess, um, you know, I'd already always been at a pop art, but I, I guess what we did was, you know, we sort of brought sort of a certain amount of primitivism and uh, a lot of posters were pretty, were very amateurish and raw and, yeah, just scribbles, you know, like literally just scribbling, the kind of thing you do when you're doodling, talking to someone on the telephone. Um, I guess all that stuff was, it was punk and del deliberately anarchic and also just expression too, about free expression, just like get an idea or do something and just sort of go with it and, you know, throw it out there. And, um, uh, you know, have yeah. fun with the imagery too. <laughs> It's just a little punk ethic and all that. Yeah. So, yeah, yeah. But it's also organic, and I think what it, what it does is that, um, you know, production and technology, at its worst, what it does, it it, um, it takes over the form, you know, it's sort of like it's the um, machinery or the equipment, and, you know, harmonizes, God knows, whatever else. And it makes the music, it tends to make the music unfresh, but if you take a, an organic approach with, with technology and with what you do, it always enlivens the music and makes it fresh for you, you know, and um, it, it means that um, I think you, cre you continue a creative spark within the form, you know, like it's typical in rock music or just music in general, people tend to burn out. They have a sort of period of flourishing where things are like all sort of coalesce and they produce their best work and then it only lasts for a certain while but it just dissipates or it's lost. And, all sorts of things can spot to lose that, you know. Sometimes it's just production. The way people are produced and presented and everything like that can be very destructive. But I think one of the things that is enabled the clean to be have longevity is the fact that we 
we sort of pull things back to a basic level and sort of like that constant sort of return to that means that you refresh yourself, you know, so you you move on but you keep the creative spark alive within that, you know, too as well. We can just can talk about that for a second. Well, yeah. we're, we're all visual artists, you know, as well as being, um, we're painters and drawers and us in water. So, <laughs> I guess it's part of that, you know, how we do just as much as yeah, yeah. But we, do we all we all sort of like flip from doing visual art to making music? I think there's a yeah a very strong relation. Yeah, both things sort of empower each other in a way, and and like you say, it's always gone hand in hand in terms of album covers, posters. That's always been an incredibly strong thing amongst a lot of the flying nun stuff, and it um, yeah it kind of enhances the music. I think in a lot of ways. Yeah. It's a very New Zealand thing, just do everything yourself. Yeah, well, especially when we started, there was, there was, no, there was, a, there was other artists that would help and, and do things, but um, it was very much do it yourself, make posters, go out, put them up, organise the gig. Yeah. 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 I think basically, as a growing through music, it's also we've grown through visual art too, just as much. And the way they inspire each other and work off each other, you know, the visual art yeah. with, with sound. Always been really conscious of it. You know. so. Can't pass what we do. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It's hand in hand. Hey, Jerry, would you have any um, frames for something that format, or if you don't? The possibility is I could stick them on a bit of uh, a board, just put them up. What have we got? I did have one frame left over there. I've got a bunch of frames there. Eh? Yeah, yeah, that's one frame there. That's good. Go ahead. Good. Yeah. Um, yeah, i got a bunch of frames. Yeah, two of them. Or even one of those leftover ones of Jake's.
star attractions of the clean. Um, uh, can you tell us a little bit about, about the art that you're showing? Yeah, um, sure. Well, um, I tend to, uh, with my artistic pursuits, sort of like by whatever means necessary. So when I'm traveling, depending on what I'm up to, or just generally anything, I, I usually keep a sketchbook. Uh, I usually draw pretty much, you know, quite often. And um, <clears throat> I happen to have, well, a pad and a bi I love biros, you know, like good old pens. I bought this one in Dunedin. It's a, supposedly going to last seven years, but we'll see about that. If it will or not. Never ending ink. Yeah, never ending ink, which is you know interesting when you're doing drawings. This is um a drawing that I, I popped off on the plane between um New York and Los Angeles, and uh, I get kind of obsessed. You know, um, Robert Crumb he's obsessed with cross hatching. I am too, and I'm kind of with um pens. I get obsessed with you know building up texture. So like when you've just got um the first mark, you know, with a pen, and then the sort of like structuring or making things, but um, so sometimes my drawings can be quite dense, and other times they can be quite um, sort of open, you know, just not too much um, detailing, but this one's quite simple, just of a, a guy's head with a hat, quite a simple little thing, but, uh, and always, uh, I get a great kick out of always doing a new um, initial or sign, you know. When I, I used to sell paintings on the street in New York for a while, in Soho, and uh, I was always uh, making my own cards, you know, hand out. I really got into the sort of like, all the different possibilities with your, you know, initial tagging a piece, you know, sort of graffiti. It's quite royal. Yeah, it's quite royal. I allude to, uh, I guess I'm quite taken with sort of the turn of the century stuff. Um, um, Art Nouveau, all that sort of decorative stuff, and it has quite a big effect for me, all that symbolist sort of things as well. <clears throat> the, the clean of uh, always, as part of the underground, but have always been great educators of the underground. And you just mentioned uh, Crumb there, and it's like uh, Robert Crumb, of course, the great American cartoonist and 60s mm -hmm. activist, somewhat. And he, uh, can you tell us a little bit about your influences? Oh, about artistic influences. Yeah, well, um, I really like uh, um, Crumb. Like a lot of the psychedelic art out of San Francisco in the 60s, all the poster art and all the influences that fed into that, it sort of fascinates me as a period. It's kind of weird recently in New York, um, I had a bit of a, a dealings with a place called the Capitol Theatre, um, which is up in um, Connecticut. And um, I got quite excited because a friend who's from San Francisco had worked on, they renovated the Capitol Theatre, and it's a it's a beautiful old theatre that's been there since the turn of the century, and the Grateful Dead and many other bands played there. I think for the Dead it was one of their favourite venues or whatever. But anyway, um, this guy, he's got a great name, Jubal. He um, said, oh, they're looking for an artist, you know, to do poster art for the Capitol Theatre. And um, this was about seven months ago. I got quite excited because I thought, oh, God, this is my opportunity to do, you know, like, really cool poster art for this theatre, you know, like, psychedelic art, and sort of make a make a stand out of it, you know. And um, <clears throat> I thought, well, okay, too good to be true. It's not going to happen, you know. And it, as it turned out, it didn't happen, you know. But um, I sent the guy off uh, various posters and things that I've done uh, in New York, I used to do a lot of flyers for our bands playing, you know, downtown. I used to put them up and everything like that. But um, I think I was just a bit too, it's just a bit too weird for them, you know. It's like pretty raw stuff and um, they didn't go for it. But it's just sort of interesting, it's just like a little, this little weird window appeared, you know. It's sort of like, oh, you know, it's like the Fillmore was sort of calling you up and saying, you know, we want you to do artwork or something. But, yeah, the world isn't weird anymore, is it? No. It's a, it's a bit more sort of corporate and structured, you know, than what it was, which is unfortunate. But um, that's getting off the track, you know. But in terms of, um, you know, influences by art, I like, I like anything right through to now in terms of, you know, what people are doing modernistically, you know, like even someone like Banksy's kind of intriguing to me, what he's got up to. But um, I do have a particular love of um, Impressionism, Symbolism, um, 
Art Nouveau sort of that period of art making, the Pre-Raphaelites I really love. Um, you know, all the classic stuff, way back to, you know, Leonardo and all the dudes, you know, the Renaissance, all that stuff. And I really love primitivism too. Um, and primitive, primitivistic forms in all cultures and graffiti and street art too. Got a love, great love for that. Yeah. You know, just like New York's just like a canvas in terms of all the stuff that's on the street there. You know, just walking around over here, I just like all the markings on this people make with, you know, stuff on the street. Crum, um, you know, Robert Crum is a, is a great artist. A lot of people give him a lot of slack for his, you know, sexual politics and everything like that, but I think he's a great, you know, he's a great drawer. You know, oh, crew. Just fantastic. I always work and always take note where what he's up to and where he's at, you know, where his latest leanings are, you know. And, um, and of course, being a New Zealander, I mean, this place is just suffused with great artists. There's just so many great people here, you know. Francis Hodgkins and you know, Colin McCann, just the whole canon of art making in this country is fantastic and inspirational, you know, and of course all the Maori art, you know, carving and <clears throat> rock art and stuff like that, I just love it all. Yeah. Tell me, um, you talk about primitivism, but it's fair to say your, your drumming style is, is, is somewhat primitive as well. Yeah. And, and sort of everything you do, sort of clean, as it look, you know, I said it in, in the nicest way. Yeah. Well, I, I actually think that the... The, the space between primitivism and sophistication is very, it's, it's a very subtle shift, you know, and sometimes um, the primitive, mm. the, the, most, the most primitive thing to me can sometimes be a, almost the most sophisticated thing in a way too. Mm. 